G'day friends, look, fair income just about every day this week, riding home from work, I was getting wet, big storms, rain everywhere. So on day five, I decided let's get some footage, let's make a video about wet weather riding. And as luck would have it, didn't rain, so I went ahead with the video anyway. Here it is, thanks for joining me. Does the weather up here ever bloody change? It would seem not. So after getting drenched riding to or from work almost every day this week, I decided a wet weather video was in order. Now there are plenty of wet weather riding tips videos on YouTube, but I've found there are some really simple and fundamental skills and ideas that are almost always overlooked, but critically important for new riders. So sit back and enjoy my top 10 wet weather riding tips. Number one, your helmet visor. As stated, I'm targeting fundamentals of wet weather riding and it doesn't get much more fundamental than being able to see. So in rain, you need to be able to keep your visor clear. At slow speeds, water droplets tend to stay on the visor and need to be wiped off. I use my glove as it has a suede type material on the palm. Once you're traveling at highway speeds, most of the droplets will run away. And if you turn your head left and right, you can usually get the stubborn ones to exit as well. Now I know guys that carry a hanky or a cloth in their jacket or a pocket somewhere so they can give a quick wipe here and there and that works well too. Now a bonus tip on the visor is to close it all the way. Water can drip down the gap between a raised visor and the front of the helmet. I've been riding along and gone to wipe my visor as explained only to find that most of the water was actually on the inside. It's a pain in the butt but much harder to wipe off while on the go. Number two, leaning in turns. Now this is really simple, but so often overlooked. It's really not rocket surgery. On wet roads, slow down. Reducing your speed reduces your lean angle, which reduces lateral loads on the tires, which reduces the chance of the reduced friction turning your ride into a bitumen slide. Slow down. Number three, clutch and throttle. Again, fundamental and simple. Go easy on both. Engine braking is a wonderful thing, but a compression lock can be dangerous. Aggressive downshifting without rev matching or without speed matching can cause momentary compression locks. Now ABS helps keeps the wheels from locking up under brake, but it won't help or stop a compression lock. A slipper clutch can, however, this is an R3, which doesn't have a slipper, similar to most entry-level small CC motorcycles. The only time I've ever had the back end slide out on this bike is when I was riding on wet road and downshifting. Now I let the bike slow further before shifting, and I take a little more time letting the clutch out. You can also rev match more accurately on a slow release clutch and you can get the engine RPMs higher reducing the chance of a locked up back wheel and then subsequent slide. Now as for throttle, yes even the modest little R3 can lose traction on a wet road. Taking off into a corner with aggressive throttle and or shifting is just dangerous regardless of what bike you're on. Take it steady, ease on the gas, short shift if you have to, go easy on the clutch and you'll find even a wet road can still be a safe road. Number four, where to ride. Now a general rule of thumb is riding on the wheel track of the car, so the right wheel here in Australia, the one closest the center line, and in the US it would be the opposite, riding along the left wheel track, closest the center line. Now it's tempting to ride right in the middle of your lane, but this is where cars and trucks leak oil onto the road. If you've ever seen a car park and notice where all the oil stains are, it's primarily in the center. All this oil is in the middle of the lane and you don't want to be riding on it. Now there are exceptions, for example if the wheel track areas are heavily worn, they may appear shiny, which may mean they're smooth, which may mean they're slippery, especially when wet. Also, a very worn wheel track can be a place where water can gather and pool. You don't want to be riding through an inch of water for extended periods of road, so there are cases where you will want to ride in the middle. Number five, road rainbows. Now if you're riding safe and taking care, then wet weather riding isn't dangerous. As we all know, a bike in motion wants to stay upright. If we take simple steps to keep it upright, you can still enjoy a day's ride even if there's rain around. But, and it's an important but, road rainbows are dangerous. This is a patch or spot on the road where oil, fuel, grease, whatever it is, has recently landed on the road. These rainbows are extremely slippery and dangerous. Avoid them at all costs. 
Number six. Now, even though it's not particularly bright today, I'm still wearing sunnies in this video. And there's a very simple reason for that. They're polarized, which means they help you see the road rainbows. With non-polarized shades, glasses, visor, or the naked eye, some road rainbows can be completely invisible. By simply wearing a pair of cheap servo sunnies, you're giving yourself superior personical eyesight. Number seven, and it's a no-brainer, visibility. Wear your high vis, all the gear, all the time, especially in the wet. Stay alert and be extra vigilant. Number eight, stopping distance, both yours and theirs. Now, apart from this numbnuts that's just pulled out in a caravan, I want you to imagine there's a 1972 HQ Monaro sedan with worn pads on rusty old drum brakes thundering along behind you under power of a big old Holden V8. And now you're stopping suddenly for a numbnuts in a caravan like we see. And he's trying desperately behind you to get his tank not to plow over the top of you. You need to leave some room both in front and behind. So how do we leave room behind? Well, we hope the guy behind us isn't a complete twat. And if he is, we simply have to slow down, maybe even let him go ahead. I know we like to stay ahead of the traffic, it's the safest place for us, but sometimes you just have to let the tailgating dickhead go in front of you for your own peace of mind. Number nine, carry some warm clothes with you. Now there's nothing worse than getting to work or to your destination and being drenched and cold. So I always keep a plastic bag with some dry clothes in my pillion luggage. Number 10, just own it. If there's one thing I've learned over these last few months, it's that rain can really ruin ride days. We work all week and we need this time to relax and unwind and having it rain can be so gosh darn depressing. So just own it, get on the bike, be safe, but enjoy your ride. Bonus tip. Once you're out of the rainy area, you can dry off a fair bit. You can chicken wing your arms and spread your legs and let that high speed wind just blow dry you. Now don't take that tip out of context in any way. Thank you so much for watching. Now put your phones down, get outside.